Today, we are making a family crest design using Kittle. And these are great for if you just wanna have them hanging up or maybe as a fun activity to do with your kids or something like that. Or if you really wanna make your own patch for clothing or a backpack or something like that, these family crests are always super interesting and it gives you the opportunity to look into some of your history for your name as well as come up with a really cool design. And I'm gonna show you how you can do it with badges, frames, illustrations, and text using Kittle. And by the way, if you're new to Kittle, go ahead and sign up to try it for free using the link in the description and you can follow along with me through this tutorial. So let's get started. All right, to get started with our coat of arms or family crest, we definitely need a shield or a badge looking design to go in the back to basically house everything else in it. And so we already have badges here in the shield style like you see right here we can pop this one in maybe take a look but it could also be an oval it doesn't necessarily have to have that kind of triangular or pentagon uh, style look uh, but i'm going to put a couple of these options up here just so you're able to see them but we also have some over in the basic shapes that aren't necessarily uh, embellished if you want to go for a more simplistic or modern approach to your family crest you could use something like this simple tombstone shape or we also have a couple of other ones like this more simple badge design and so it's completely up to you what I'm gonna do is go back and find one that I already wanted to use earlier uh, I'm gonna scroll down here just a little bit and I really like the look of this one it's a little bit different it's got kind of those points on the top and the, with the curves around it and I really like it uh, no other specific reason I just really want to go with this one but then what I also thought would be cool is if I grab this kind of scroll style uh, badge and I make it a little bit smaller and we can put it down here because we're gonna put a monogram in there I think that would look really cool so again you can combine components like this and make something really cool and unique to you now we're gonna need a banner okay so we need a banner to house our motto or maybe a location depending on what you want to do but many times it's a motto or a phrase like a family phrase or maybe it could be like a funny phrase uh, everyone says all of the time or something maybe your grandmother said or something like that uh, whatever the family motto or family phrase is is going to go in this banner right here and then what we need to do is find a panel to put up top because I also want to put some text up top. This might ne not necessarily be super common in uh, older style uh, coat of arms, but uh, sometimes you will have text on both the top and bottom. And so this is where I want to house Kittle. I want it to say Kittle family up here at the top with the motto down below. And so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and switch all my colors over so I'm working with a more simple palette. And now it's time for some supporters, which are the, uh, most of the time it's an animal that goes on the left and right. Again, very symmetrical. We're making a very symmetric style design. And I'm gonna go with this etched uh, vintage style dog because again, I'm going full like heraldic like old style uh you know vintage victorian even earlier than that maybe gothic looking style design and i want to stick with it by using this kind of etched looking dog i'm going to duplicate it right click and flip it so that it's on the opposite side and now to make sure it's completely symmetric i'll grab both and then i can group them with command or control g and i can align them so they're perfectly in the middle of the artboard and then I need to go ahead and switch my colors over so that they match the rest of the design here. And then once we're feeling pretty good about the supporters on either side, we are going to find a crown to put up top, which is going to take the place of where a helmet might be with a mantling. But we're going to go with a crown because I think that will be really cool and also just kind of uh, speaks to the overall style of the design. So again, I'm being careful to pick one that is in that same style. And now we can pick some flourishes and what I'm gonna do with the flourishes is kind of fill out the body of the rest of the the design so around the bottoms and the left and the right and the top and so we have a variety from thin and thick to flourishes or even filigree there in the uh, in the thin shapes we also have components down here that could be interesting
everything and also a line. We also have the really thin Sanborn style elements you could use as well as wreaths and laurels. And then again, even more thin flourishes. There's just so many. But what I'm going to do is stick with the bold flourishes. Again, I'm going to show you here by adding a bunch of these in. I'm going to change the fills to white and make the outline the same color as everything else. And then as you can see here, all I'm doing is actually moving these components to make a symmetrical shape on either side. So I'm just duplicating it, flipping it, and putting it on the either side. So we're just creating an even bigger overall frame, if you will, or, or something that's housing the entirety of this crest or coat of arms. So you see this is all very, uh, very similar. It just takes a little bit of time to do, but it isn't extremely uh, difficult. You're just duplicating designs and putting them on the opposite side. Again, making the fill white and making the outline that dark blue. Hey, real quick, if you're getting value out of this Family Crest tutorial, let me know by hitting the thumbs up button and that red subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. Then let me know in the comments, do you have an idea for your Family Crest already? Or is this something you hadn't even thought about? I'd love to know. It is something that is super cool and I'd love to see it. So share it on social media and tag Kittle Design. So let me know down in the comments and let's get back to the tutorial. So now we can add some text and get started with our text design that's going to go in these panels and badges. So for the top text, what we're going to do is use just Kittle. Again, this is our kind of Kittle family crest. And so what we need to do is find a font that's going to play nice with both the style and the space. Kittle isn't an extremely large word. So using a font like this, the grocer font, which is a beautiful serif font, one fits the style, but also helps us fill that space a little bit better. And so what I'm going to do is add some effects to this because I think that would be really cool and also point to the time of the you know the time period of the style that we're making right now so I am going to increase the outer width to give this just a little bit more you know, cohesiveness together and then I'm going to change these colors to make sure that they make sense so for this one I'm going to use this dark blue and then I'm going to make the inside white what I'm going to do after that is add some etched lines on the inside so if I add these lines I can play with the weight of the sliders down here, the distance and the weight sliders to get them exactly how I want to and then I can change it to that dark blue. Then I can take this even further, go back, add some border weight which will basically make this design look like it's inset, this decoration. And I think this etched kind of text looks really, really cool. It looks really old school vintage. Then I'm just going to space this out so that it fits the space even better. So always be careful with your font choice, make sure it's fitting the style, but also helping you fit that space just a little bit better. So now we can add some more text with the T button and then I'm going to choose Old Benchville. Absolutely love this font and it makes sense for the time period of the style. And what we're going to do is put our location down here. Again, you probably would do a family motto or something like that, but also location is also fine to use. Uh, there's a couple of different components and you can check out the different components of a family crest or a coat of arms on the internet and find out what works best for you. But for now, we're going to go with Bird Berlin, Germany. I'm going to use this circle transformation to get it exactly how I want to, just moving that little point up and down, and then I can just decrease the size until it makes sense here in the bottom of that banner. And then, of course, let's change our text to make sure that it's cohesive with that dark blue. So now I'm going to put family right here below Kittle. So all I'm going to do is add some more text, type in family, and then put an effect on this to make it look like it's kind of cutting out or masking some of those little filigree elements up there up up top so i'm going to use the brookfield font for this because it's a little bit more condensed i'm going to raise this up to put it exactly where i want to again you know you could you could do this or not do this just little subtext pieces that you can put around the top of your uh, family name or the family crest or whatever you want it doesn't necessarily have to say family but again i'm going to make this outer width so big that when i make it white it looks like it's masking out some of the parts of that uh, those flourishes so i think that looks really cool just like that and then what i'm going to do is go over and choose this monogram font so that i can put it down there in that bottom scroll element so what we're going to do 
is KF for Kittle family. And then once we feel good about that, then we can lower that down and put that here in the bottom scroll badge right here. And then we can just work on our sizing and our uh, arrangement to make sure that it's exactly where we want. Add some effects and it's gonna stand out even more than it did before and I think that looks really cool. So now what we're gonna focus on is filling the middle piece with things that are important to us. To do that first, I'm going to make this kind of dividing line here. So I'm using this thin line, this straight line Victorian element here. I'm gonna make a grid of four and then use a simple line to divide the top and bottom because a lot of times you'll see multiple things that are important to you or your family so things that are important to us are things like an art brush you know we are of course very creative uh, beer is a great one we're gonna put a computer in here because we like our uh, we like our computers we like our electronics and then we also like to game here at Kittle uh, and so this could be anything you could do a variety of different things in your crest now what I'm gonna do is beef up some of these components because you see this one's really thin if I add some border weight and then make the border weight that blue uh, it matches a lot better so I've just gone through and done that so now I can work on my colors but always make sure that things are playing together correctly whether it's the colors or whether it's the thickness of the strokes you want to make sure that your entire design is cohesive here is our final family crest coat of arms done in Kittle super easily using badges and illustrations so I hope you have a ton of fun with this and don't forget it's a great gift for Father's Day or Mother's Day or something like that or just something to do with the family now, if you wanna see other tutorials using Kittle, I have these videos here on my right that I know you're gonna enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any upcoming videos and features and things like that. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.